What is up, everybody? This is Marshall Lee of DonkeyJawProjects.com. That's it, DonkeyJawProjects.com. And today we have a black canvas to draw on. Pretty interesting. We got black paper. And we're going to do some, we got some tools. We're going to do some experimenting. Got all kinds of stuff that we could play with, you know? Um, so, yeah. Hope you guys are doing well today. Um, we're going to get into it and uh, see how things go. Um, <clears throat> a couple of things I just realized I forgot to do when setting up this video. So I'm going to go do that now as we're waiting for some people to come hang, come hang and draw. Hopefully you guys are into these kind of videos where we have like the top down and we're just talking and drawing and I should come up with a name for it. I'm thinking like, uh, I had one idea today. I was thinking like, um, call it sink, uh, what, what is sink or swim art cast or something or the sink or swim chat, something like that. <laughs> so like I'll have almost like a challenge of something I want to do like this drawing on black canvas or something or um, black paper I should say hold on excuse <laughs> excuse me great way to start a show sneeze <laughs> um, so anyways hopefully y'all can hear me good I don't have my normal mic situation set up that I like to do, but, uh, you know, that's okay. Uh, I'll get my setup more situated soon enough. Um, let's see. So I got that. Oh, I wanted to make sure I had my links in the description so we all can learn more about whatever I'm doing, if you feel like exploring all that fun stuff so i'm getting the links in the description real quick <clears throat> and then we'll get started so yeah hopefully some people come by hang out we're just gonna have some fun relax chill out make some arts arts and farts what's up sideburns how you doing good to see you here Do, do, do. So the reason why I got black a black sketchbook is because I uh, see like there's all this like shaking with this setup. Maybe I should uh, do something about that. Hmm. What can I do about that? So I'm trying to test setups and stuff i had these ac ac art i don't know sketch cards here <laughs> maybe that'll make it more stable no that's not making it stable at all wait let's see <laughs> oh it's a little more stable but the other thing is putting it lower it's kind of on this thing i'll show you <laughs> sorry for the shaky cam guys so it's on this um and uh this is just like a loud case full of um pens so now if i put it like this i think it's a little less shaky but it's closer so you know hopefully i can keep i have actually more space if i do it this way anyway so i don't know we'll see hopefully this works out good all right, so I'm thinking about possibly doing live streams like this, um, and I'd like to, I might do scheduled, but I kind of just like doing it, like, if I feel like it, you know, but um, 
at the very least, it would be good if I kind of set it up like earlier in the day, you know, so people would know. But I literally just set it up a half hour. I've been for the last half hour is when I first like decided to kind of set it up and everything. So, you know, it just is what it is. Um, but anyways, so the reason why I bought black paper, black sketchbook today on the way home from work is because I have, and I probably talked to you guys about this before you might've seen, I have black sketch covers to draw on. I already played around on the back of this one with some gold and white, just for the fun of it one day. But it's probably be better if I do that kind of thing on a different surface, you know? in practice before I actually get into doing a sketch cover, you know? So that's what we're going to do here. Now I got a bunch of tools and it's kind of crazy because I was at Michael's today. I'm like, oh man, I want to get something. And so I actually asked Dee Dee Willingham. Um, is that how you say her last name? I think it is, right? Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think that's how, how you say it. But check out Dee Dee Willingham's channel. I like, I've always been a fan. Like, she's she's been around for a while um, doing videos and stuff. And uh, I was on her, I wasn't on her channel, but I was watching her, her video today uh, where she does actually live streams just like this. And that's kind of how I got, to be honest, that's how I got inspired to do this. I've already been thinking about doing a lot of like top down videos and stuff. Um, but uh, I wonder if this is a little bit too bright. Maybe. I don't know. It's hard to say. I'm using this webcam. I'm doing a bunch of things. But uh, anyways, I was on her ch or watching her video and uh, I asked her, you know, do you know any techniques for like drawing on black paper and stuff. I mean, there's obvious things, you know, but I just, she's, she's good at like doing like kind of, uh, simple. I don't, I don't know. She's got like a lot of like cool techniques for, for like mixed media type of stuff, mix, mixed medium type of stuff like painting. And I don't know. I think she knows how to like do gouache and, 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 uh, watercolors and all that kind of stuff. I've seen her do like a bunch of different things. Um, and so I just figured maybe she has like some techniques and she did. She told me one thing she told me that was kind of interesting was you can paint, um, you can paint acrylic. And then I guess after it dries, you can actually draw on it with like another color, like colored pencil and stuff like that. And a lot of times she uses um, colored pencils, like I guess she uses these uh, Prismacolor color pencils, which I don't have. Um, you know, I don't have those. I, I have one, uh, two now. <laughs> I went to the store and I bought this one today. And then this is like a yellow one. It's hard to see. Like, it's so bright. I don't really love this camera situation. I need to... Actually, I should ask her what, what camera she uses, and maybe I can get it because her camera is definitely better. Um, I'm like sitting here copying everything she does, I guess, huh? <laughs> but I was looking through my tools. I'm like, do I have like a white colored pencil? So this one's more yellow. It's cream, I guess. And like, it'll work, you know, but I just wanted something I could actually just sketch on black paper with. Um, and they didn't have any white, you know, so, but apparently I'm pretty sure now that I see that I have white, I, I had this situation before. I think I might ask Jeff Lafferty, like what he uses for some things, probably for like toned paper and stuff. And he probably told me about this. Um, but, uh, you know, so I do have a white one too. So that's nice. And I bought, so I bought this pad. I bought this one cream color uh, pencil. And I got this, uh, it's like a Prisma color. I was 
close to buying like a set of colored pencils, but I just bought this, you know, sharpener or whatever. And also what they do in, in like, uh, what's her name uh, in, um, Didi's community, which like, I really like all kinds of, um, experimental generative processes and stuff. And, uh, like with my music, I've learned that and, and everything. And so what they do a lot of times on, on her channel is like, they do like, I don't know if it's, it's kind of like collage art and stuff. Like, I don't know what they would call it, but I don't know if this is what they use. They might use like actual matte medium for, um, you know, paintings and stuff. But they said they use matte medium, but that was, I was trying to go cheap today. I didn't really want to spend a lot of money and I saw this and this is kind of the same thing, I think. Um, but it's like the cheaper version and it's not necessarily, I don't think it's meant to be used with paint as like matte medium. And I don't really know much about using different medium. I know a little bit. I went to, I took some classes here and there. Another thing that I saw on DD that DD was doing or had used was like these Posco markers. And I was like sitting there at, at um, Michael's and I'm like, I should buy some of the Posca markers, but again, they were kind of expensive. And so I was like, you know, I'm not going to buy them. So what happened though, is I looked in that same box I just showed you guys and I have, that's the box I have all my paint markers in, but I thought I only had like cheap crappy stuff, but I have a whole set of like typical color Posca markers, you know, and I, I don't think I ever really even used them to be honest. Their paint markers and I don't I think I might have bought some individual colors too because this these two colors don't look like they would have came with a set you know I think I got like the primary colors and um then I got um and Dan let me know if you hear me how how the sound is you know because I'm, I'm just going through the laptop sound um I'm not going to hook up my mic tonight but you know but anyways, I got these a while back, and I don't even remember getting them, but that was cool. And then I was even more delighted because this will be good for the black paper because it's, you know, opaque paint and stuff. And then what I didn't even realize was I, I forgot that I started buying, like, all these Molotow um, acrylic paint markers. So I have even more colors I can mess with. And they're pretty much brand new, like, because I don't think I used them much. I, I planned, now I'm starting to remember, like, I was planning on using them for, like, some graffiti-esque, just experimental stuff, and I just didn't. This one I, I had for a long time. This one might not even work. Um, but uh, the other ones, I, I think I did, like, one experiment with them and never used them. So I got some, like, I mean, that's, like, maybe $100 or so, maybe more worth of paint markers that I forgot I even ever got. So that's cool. <laughs> what a surprise, you know? Um, another thing that's really cool that I use a lot in just inking, you know, traditional stuff is this Presto squeezy, like correction pen stuff. So I like this because it's kind of messy and you, I don't know, like I almost like that it's messy and like globby and stuff. So it's kind of like experimental. So I have that stuff. Um, I also found some other things. I found this um, General's char Charcoal White pencil. So it's charcoal. So, you know, it's just a little bit different than like a colored pencil. And I also just wanted to try this because I actually have a set of these like cheapo praying colored pencils and they're not good. They're like, I think they're wax based or something. I don't know. They're They're just not great. You know, they're not like you know, a, a pro level illustration colored pencil, but I'm still curious, you know, how well it does and who knows, maybe I can try to get some use out of them, you know. Um, I got a toothbrush because that's always fun to get some textures. Um, you know, I got some paint brushes and stuff. I have watercolors over here too that I had set up from the other day, so I can still use that. Um, I also have... Uh, 
I don't really know why I have it in this white bag. I feel like I was trying to keep it fresh or I thought it would spill, but it's not spilling in the bag. So let's get rid of the bag. But I have one tube of golden acrylic paint, titanium white. And, you know, this stuff's kind of on the expensive side. Well, expensive for a cheap artist. I, I think there's much more expensive paints than golden, but it's good quality paint and stuff. So there's that. Um, what else? Oh, and I have like, uh, I just have one um, Jelly Roll pen. It's 08. And these are like weird. They're like hit or miss. They don't always come out very opaque and stuff. But... You know, I don't know. I, I need to, like, find out, like, because people use these all the time, and it seems like they like them, but I don't know. Maybe they just run out of ink too fast or something. Like, this one's, like, all the way down to here on ink, so it's it's already pretty low. So I don't know how much use I'm going to get out of that. Um, I think that's pretty much it for stuff that really that I think that I can use on a black canvas. So, you know, I guess let's get started. Um, if anybody has any thoughts or ideas of like things to to do, um, let me know. But uh, I'm just going to I'm probably just going to do like some automatic drawing stuff. I'm going to, you know, play around with the spawn character or something. I don't know. You know, we'll see. So. Let's try this charcoal thing and just make some marks, you know? So, yeah. And I'm wondering if it smudges. Yeah, no, it doesn't smudge, so. That would be cool if it did smudge. But, uh, yeah, so. That's kind of that situation. We can throw in a little spawn mask. I think this is kind of the shape, right? I actually have a picture of him right here, but he's drawn so different so often. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of hard to always know what's the right shape. I should have got the old comics out, really. And he's got like the green eyes, so I could even like use some of this uh, color paint stuff. So, you know, and I guess kind of the cool thing with uh, with using black paper is how many tools do you have that are black? You know, so that means you've got like. A ton of probably a ton of um like erasers you know <laughs> like let's not use that i mean let's just use a sharpie right you know look at that i'm like erasing <laughs> and i'm sure you know mileage will vary depending you know, on what you use and all that. So that's kind of neat. So let's see how the, let's see how this yellow praying thing goes. Oh, it shows up, man. It's kind of cool. Doesn't smudge or anything. It actually shows up pretty good. Maybe I should bring out the other color pencils. This one just had like, I just happened to have this one in a box. I have a couple more here. I kind of doubt. Let's see. This is green. So it's, show, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's showing up. It's not like super opaque. You can't see it on the camera, I don't think. Looks like this webcam thing is like, there you go. You can see it there a little bit, but yeah, I need, it's like doing that autofocus thing, which is annoying. So I'm going to have to figure out a better solution for, uh, see, I put my hand down. It does that. Um, I have to find a better solution for uh, 
live streaming camera stuff. I mean, I, I don't have like a ton of money right now. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to like, I shouldn't say that, but I, I'm just like trying to like not use a ton of money at the moment. But who knows? Maybe I'll get rich off of YouTube someday. <laughs> uh, I would like to invest in like better cameras, better mics and stuff. Gladman Comics. Yo, good to see you drawing. Hey, thanks, man. Hope you're doing well. What are you guys up to tonight? Everybody in the chat. So blue kind of shows up. Again, these are, you know, cheapo color pencils, but even those seem to be doing something, you know. They're worth experimenting with. Um, let's see. What else do we got? Well, like I said, I like this little presto correction pen like i said it's got that kind of globby type of vibe going and then like sometimes there's enough paint you can kind of get like a dry brush effect and it smells nice and white outy <laughs> which I, i'm assuming is a probably not a smell most people want to <laughs> want to smell Kind of cool though, right? So, yeah. All right, so we got that. Let's try the good old gel pen. I don't know why I'm shaking it. <laughs> and you'll see like how non-opaque it is next to the whiteout. That's why I have the whiteout. Like, and then I can get it to be like slightly more opaque, but then it gets to this place where it's like, when I'm putting more on, like if I let it dry and then draw over it again, it gets like whiter, but I don't have time for that, yo. I don't got time for that, you know? And then it also likes to pick up the the like marks you already made. And I don't know, I'm not, a, and if you go like a little lighter, like it'll flow a little better, but it's like, it's probably still good to have actually a pen that's a little less opaque anyways. It's like when your Sharpie runs out, if, if you, I don't really draw with a Sharpie too often, but when your Sharpie runs out, it has a certain, almost like a dry Sharpie effect, you know? So that's kind of cool. Um, so another thing I have too, I didn't mention, and this got like ink all over it, which is really annoying because... You know, the label looked kind of cool, but I guess it doesn't matter. But I have, like, <clears throat> this uh, gold ink stuff. So, you know, it's got a little dropper on it, too. So it might be kind of cool to, like, you know, do some wet on wet or something. Or do, like, one of these things where you're, like... <laughs> Sorry for the spit. <laughs> you ever see people do that kind of thing? And then they like make something out of it. My buddy Kim, Kim Holm does that all the time on, um, on TikTok. And then I can use this, uh, this um, folding pen. Pick up some of that and make some interesting lines sometimes. I guess I need to get more. Let's see. I like getting these like splatter lines or, or like textured lines with. That's kind of why I got these, uh, the folding pen. I uh, ordered this from this like guy who makes them handmade in Russia. I wanted that for like a long time and uh, finally had the money to grab some and yeah he, he makes some custom it's pretty cool it wasn't like crazy expensive but and this is a, a ruling pen another interesting tool I mean this stuff is kind of meant for like calligraphy and stuff but uh, I really like certain textures it gets and 
I'm not like it's not showing really great the way I'm doing it now because I'm not also not really good at it. But <clears throat> you know, let me see if I can load it up a little better with the uh, ink. Maybe I'll. I don't know. We'll just do like a little stuff here. I'm going to have to tear this paper off because it's all wet, but uh, yeah, it's like I'm not really in, in like lettering mode right now and I don't really know how to do it anyways all that well, but you can get some actually really interesting lines out of it and you can draw, you know, too, with it if you really want to, you know, which is something I want to do more experimenting with at some point. Cleaning my room, Gladman Comics says, cleaning my room might draw a little bit, though. Yeah, man. That's, I'm going to be on for a while. So, you know, if you feel like hanging out, you know, you got someone to hang out and draw with, right? I don't know. I think that's always fun. So, Yeah. Peter Palmiato, pa, Palmiato. For some reason, I can't say Peter's name lately. Peter Retro Palmiati. <laughs> How you doing, man? It could be like drawing backwards. Yeah, yeah, could be. Um, so, yeah, this one's getting a little kind of crazy. I should uh, get some paper towel. That's another thing I could always use, too. Paper towel or sponge or... You know, get these kind of crazy textures. Put a little spawn crown on him and then be like, bam, 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 bam. I don't know. This is, uh, you know, you just try things. You got to keep wiping it off, though. And just have, like, this me messy, like, experimental crown. <laughs> so, I don't know. Could always uh, fill it out a little more. Let's see. Let's use... Let's see. Yeah, we can use the little jelly roll thing. Try to. I hate this... I, you know, I get frustrated with the jelly rolls. I'm going to use the trusty, dusty correction thingy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's the stuff right there. That's the stuff. King Spawn. I don't know anything about this story with, like, King Spawn, but, you know, I got... If you guys didn't see, the reason why I'm doing experimenting and I got this, you know, black sketchbook was because I want to kind of get some techniques going and that way I'll be able to do these sketch covers better, you know. So this is a big fat mess, but we're going to, oh yeah, I was going to kind of clean this up a bit. Pretty cool texture you can get. I guess I could have... Uh, Got the old brush out, too. We're going to get messy tonight, so if this looks re weird and strange to you, I'm sorry, but uh, I like doing weird and strange things. Now I'm going to brush my teeth with them, and then I'll have gold teeth. Then I'll be a real hip-hopper, finally. Finally. All right, now I can turn the page, sort of. It'll probably be stuck to the thingy later. All right. Let's see, what else we got? Like I said, we got all these paint markers. We can test those. Um, so, yeah, let's do that. I might actually come, come up with, like, a relatively, like, artful drawing at some point. But for now, we're going to just start experimenting and then see where the night takes us you know so the one i was gonna 
going to get was the Pascos today, Pascos, and lo and behold, I had them and didn't realize. Nathan Rosario, how you doing, man? Nice to see me drawing and experimenting. Thank you. I guess I could, like, kind of do this whole thing. I don't know why I didn't, but but everybody, shout out to everybody watching. Get your art tools out and do some drawing with me. And then we got Mr. Rocket Ship Evan. How you doing? Stopped stopping by for a minute. Glad you did, man. Glad you are. So let's see how this bad boy goes. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I mean it's a paint marker. So you know, pretty cool. Has anybody read um, or know anything about the story of King Spawn? Because I don't. <laughs> I should actually read the comic, but eh, who cares? <laughs> Let's get weird with it. Let's see. Uh, 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 uh. Now, I mean, is it kind of maybe it's stupid that I'm doing like going to do fan art of King Spawn, but I'm really just going to do fan art of Spawn. It doesn't really matter to me, like, you know, that much, but I, I do lo really like Spawn. Like, I like, I mean, I'm a fan of, you know, the Todd McFarlane, you know, the image era of comics, you know, that's where I came from, and I was super excited, you know, to read Spawn and get Spawn every month that I could when I was younger. The story wasn't that great, you know? I think even Todd McFarlane admits that, but I was freaking into it. So I am a fan of Spawn. I like the design, you know, and all that. I know I'm drawing him, like, weird. I, I like playing around with, like, um, cartoony stuff and I don't know I'm just playing with I'm kind of just making marks at this point Peter says heard gunslinger spawn was cool only just heard about spawn king spawn yeah I I mean I, the visuals I've seen from gunslinger spawn is really cool Nathan says I used to read spawn back in the day but I haven't kept up yeah I think you're better off <laughs> <laughs> I haven't kept up either, but I doubt that the story's really gone very far, you know? So let's see, is this dry? You know, I was testing doing that, like, um, fade technique. Um, so I should test that with this, with these markers as well. I was trying to do it with, like, the white charcoal pen. But, uh, yeah, that didn't work out so well. So I really want to get like into all kinds of alternative ways of making comics and stuff. Like it's just something I'm into. And uh, so really all of this is practice for my future endeavors. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so. Even like doing fan art because I want to create characters, you know. Marshall's going to make graffiti spawn. Totally, man. I should. I totally should, dude. Totally should. So um, I was asking before, how is the sound? I, it, this is just my laptop mic, and I'm like, let's see, two feet away from it. <laughs> it's like you know, in front of me and all this stuff's in front. Like, 
it's right at the edge of this is where it starts and i don't know where the mic is actually like on the thingy so i i do have a better mic but i'm not using it right now so he is kind of graffiti silly spawn looking let's see let's get some uh molotov in there with green eyes Green eyes. Wait, is that how it goes? <laughs> oh yeah, I like how that. I like how that color comes out. I got to figure out a better camera because I know you guys can't see that. Like that's so dumb. I guess I could like. See, this is what I'm doing. If you, <laughs> you can't even see it, like <laughs> this is what it looks like, though. It's not amazing. <laughs> uh. So let's see how the red, because we're gonna need some red cape, red cape going on, you know. Let's see how the red goes. Oh yeah, look at that crisp red. I like that. Oh yeah, let's get it. That's pretty dope. Boom. I'm always like doing like graffiti esque letters and stuff in my sketchbooks just for fun. Because I don't know. I used to do not graffiti, but I used to sketch graffiti a lot in my sketchbooks and that's what i like doing the sound is good awesome thank you thank you thank you for letting me know it's probably a little echoey i need to put some pictures and maybe some furniture in this room <laughs> the glare the glare maybe not have this light so close well i could try doing that that's a good idea um Hmm. Well, you know what? I can turn down. Plus, you know, this camera, like I said, the focus is, um, let's see, the focus goes in and out. See, if you put the light too low, uh, it's a little bit better. Like, you know, when I put my hand in certain places, you can see it better, you know, so... It might be partially because of the black paper too, you know. So, um, yeah, you know. But these paint markers are kind of, kind of the cat's pajamas. I think I didn't do this enough. Come on, ice cream. Oh yeah. Nice. Nice. All right, let's see. So the paint markers work good. Let's see, hot pink. A little better. Yeah, I know. Just a little bit, though. Should I do pink spawn? <laughs> that would be so progressive, dude. Kind of almost automatic drawing. <laughs> Just making marks and stuff for, for the moment. We might get into actually making something worthwhile. We'll see. I'll take requests. Anybody got requests? Things to draw? Uh, all right. I guess I could test um, my white sketchbook as well, just to see how the light is working. The other thing that I can test after this, too, is like getting into some actual paints, seeing if we could get some layers or something going, you know. So I'll at least put the sketchbook down just to see, like, if the light situation is doing anything different. So we got this. And 
Let's see if I turn the light up because it's now it seems like it's too dark. You know, and it keeps adjusting. It might be too light. And I put my hand there. Does it want to focus? Yeah, it's doing that thing. Um, sorry, there may be some nudie type of drawings because I was doing some figure studies here. But I don't know. Hopefully you guys don't care. I don't care. You know, I'm learning, learning how to draw. All right. Well, this is a good test actually right here because like I can see on the on the camera, it looks like this is coming out really dark, you know, and it, it's, you know, relatively bright. So I don't know, even when I turn the light, the bright light up, I just need a better camera. That's really the the gist of it. Because it should look like, I don't know, even that's not that good. So maybe this isn't a good test of it. But, uh, let's see. Yeah. Just not a good camera, really. Yeah. So it is what it is, you know. Do, 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 do. What else we got? Let's see. We'll do a little drawing in here for a little bit. Let's see if we could get in some sketching of some spawn. Let's see. I need to get a good pose going, you know. Let's go with the typical first. Go with typical stuff. Like, I almost feel like just freaking do this a little bit and then form a cape around that. <laughs> so, because that's, you know, that's, that's how McFarlane be doing it, you know. Just crazy cape action. And get the uh, the outstretched arm. We gotta get these like, you know, basic poses out of the way first. You know, <laughs> I drew a cartoony spawn a while back, and you know, it was really fun. Actually, I was. I thought at one point, like, maybe I'd make, like, almost like a fan comic or something with the cartoony version. That might be cool. So let's see. Have his, I'm not following my own rules of uh, gesture first. I hate when I don't follow my own rules. Do, do, do. I like um, I like drawing in, in like just regular pens because then I'm just like way less precious with it. Put the leg there, you know, do the whole superhero thingy. I don't know. <laughs> this is like the worst drawing of Spawn ever. <clears throat> but who cares, right? I'm sure I must have, like, I don't know, probably drew Spawn a lot when I was young, younger, or try, attempted to. <laughs> Kind of exaggerating the shapes a little bit. You know, he's got this kind of, it's like his mask shape is like 
the shape that goes throughout his whole costume, which is actually a pretty good design, decent, you know, design technique. You know, a shape motif. I've done that, you know, trying to design characters and stuff, so that's pretty good. Then you just got to add, like, lots of chains and spikes, you know. <laughs> the essence of spawn all these chains and spikes that he never uses maybe i don't know. actually he does use this it seems like he sometimes does use them at least when i've read the comic Let's see i can see what's there but it could be a tad brighter maybe your webcam settings might help yeah i have no clue how to do webcam settings nathan says i love sketching in pen as well it keeps you loose and in time it improves your work yeah i agree hello adra jr <laughs> I, I don't know how to say your name but hello thanks for stopping in i guess spawn is relatively easy to draw you know when his legs are just black <laughs> you know I feel like his his uh, costume, though, it changes so much. Like, I don't even know. Like, I was just trying to find, like, the typical, like, old school. Like, I shouldn't say. I don't know if it's old school. For some people, it probably is. But, um, you know, Spawn costume to take for reference. You know, the original, like, McFarlane one. These legs are so horrible. <laughs> Everything's horrible in this drawing, but, you know, just sketching for a little bit, trying to kind of get an idea. But, hey, we could do some crazy cape action with the lines I put in. See what happens. Just, like, just do this and do this shape and do this shape. and I mean, it doesn't really matter, right? Like, the cape doesn't have a function, does it? <laughs> oh, my gosh. And just make like we did it on purpose. You know? <laughs> just put some shapes in. It's a cape. <laughs> uh, my cape is so bad, it's, it's the worst. <laughs> uh, anyways. Uh, so, yeah. That was a really bad drawing. I have to now I have to like go through my sketchbook and show you some drawings that are better. <laughs> I've been getting into this guy, Space Hawk. Even this one is the proportions are pretty bad, but he's a old uh, public dominion um, character, and I kind of drew him again there. I don't know. I don't have very many good sketches in my sketchbook, to be honest. I drew Wolverine, sort of, a cartoony version. It's kind of fun. <laughs> um, and then it's just like character. Well, you saw the Spider-Man. That's a pretty good one, but that's not great either. But it's pretty fun. So, yeah, I don't know. Just messing around. That's what a sketchbook's for, right? All right. So... I mean, we got to get some uh, some good uh, pose or something for good old uh, Spawny Boy. Happy little accidents. I know, right? I need some of those. I need more of those happy little accidents. Oh, I know what I was going to do. I was going to mess with paint a little bit. See how just typical cheapo, I think these are cheap, Amsterdam. I don't know where I got these or if somebody gave them to me. This focus sucks. Anyways, they're Amsterdam paints. So I guess we'll start with the white. Got to check out the white. Um, I have like these little plastic things I can use as like kind of a palette, I guess. I 
Do 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 do. Let's use like a smaller brush. All right, here we go. Ta da da! Oh yeah, look at that. That works good. Feel like I might just like make some marks like this and then just see what emerges, you know. Or, you know, different kinds of marks. I like that dry brush effect, though. It's pretty neat. So that works pretty good. Let's see uh, what another color looks like. Well, we're going to probably be using reds. So let's try that. So what are you guys up to today? Did everybody work today like me? <laughs> Good old day job is always fun. Oh yeah, it's like blood, red like blood, blood. <laughs> And then go back in there with some white. Get that pink going just in a couple of spots. Last night I had, um, I was talking to a friend on the uh, Adventures in Comic Making Discord. And uh, I think that's what it's called now. Um, and uh, he was saying uh, that he really liked Heat or whatever. Like, he was just mentioned that movie, Heat. And um, I was like, you know what? I saw that, like, when it came out in the movie theaters. And that was, that was the last time I saw it. And I really, like, I just remember that I did like it. But I don't remember it that well. <laughs> And now, you know, so I was like, I think I'm going to watch that. So when I was done with the Discord, I was like, let's let's uh, go check that out, you know, as I try to go to bed and stuff. And uh, if I fall asleep, I fall asleep, no problem. Um, which I did end up getting tired enough. And so partially through it, I stopped it. So when I'm done with this stream, that's probably what I'll be doing. <laughs> I really should uh, rinse off my brush. Rinse off my brush. Oh, we were, I was gonna try watercolor too. Like, I kind of doubt that that'll show up, but it might have like some cool effects. Let's give that a shot. You never know. I got all the tools here. All the tools. Nathan says on vacation went to art mu the art museum with their family. That's awesome. What um what art museum? Did you go to like the Wadsworth Athenaeum in Hartford? Um that would be cool. I I like that. I I went there. I've gone there so many times. Ooh, let's try this. <laughs> let's get this gold ink is like it's just too fun, you know? Let's use it, try it with a brush. Yeah. Freaking love this gold ink. I was with somebody when I got it, and they were like, get the gold ink. And I was like, I don't really need gold ink. And then I was like, you know what? Maybe I will get gold ink because it's a freaking cool idea. You're right. Let's get gold ink. And I did. And I'm glad I did. It'll be good for Spawn's crown if I do a crown on him. 
So, yeah. Of course, on this, it looks like yellow, but it's it's very reflective, actually. It's definitely metallic. So that's neat. Um, so, yeah, watercolors. Um, where I moved to recently, um, there's actually, it's kind of like a, um, cultural-ish, it's not a cultural town per se, but the, it's like in the center of town and there's like kind of some culture-y type of things. Um, so there's like some art galleries and some funky restaurants and stuff, basically that's it. Um, and there's even this restaurant called the studio or something like that. And it's actually an art studio. Like you could like throw like pots of clay and stuff. And if you want, and you can have coffee and they have like little classes sometimes, or, you know, you could do paintings, you could do art. I haven't gone there yet, but I, I can't wait to go check it out. I might check some of that out, um, to, uh, this weekend or the, something like that. And, um, I'm also, I, I live like right across the street from um, a park and in that kind of in that park basically is, is a big old library. So like, I mean, it's literally like feet step, footsteps away to the library. And, and that's like, I think a cool place to go. And there's like these other like cool restaurants and stuff. There's brewery, there's uh you know, some, there's actually some art, actual art galleries and stuff too. Um, so that's really neat. Let's see, uh, if it's possible to write on this, uh, gold stuff. Oh yeah. Look at that ink. Oh, oh wait, it's not, it's a little bit wanting to get absorbed into it or something. And this is like Pigma ink and stuff. So you know, it's kind of typical, like micron type stuff. But, you know, there's always the uh, black paint markers. Oh, uh, yeah. That's kind of cool. Neato. Um, let's see. So I wanted to try watercolor. Um, Nathan says, it's, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in Massachusetts. Um, obviously Boston area, there's definitely a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, I haven't been there yet. I, I need to like start like I remember like when COVID hit, I really wanted to like spend a lot of time going out to places like trying music. I even thought like museums and galleries, but I'm like, I can't cause it's COVID, <laughs> you know, but it's, it's, uh, I guess technically it's still COVID. I don't know, but, uh, you know, you can do a lot more now and, uh, pretty much everything you can do still at, at this point where I live, at least, you know, they pretty much don't have any restrictions. Um, so, you know, I should do that now. There's a lot of things I wanted to, like, do around COVID time that I have to remember. Oh, yeah, I wanted to do that. Let's try doing that, you know. Yellow on gold. That's interesting. It shows up, though. Let's see, winding down my day, lots of little things accomplished, but still more to do. Tomorrow is another day, getting tired as well. Yeah, I feel you, I feel you. I'll be winding down too, you know. Been doing this stream for about an hour, but I'm going to keep going for a little bit. But I want to do more, a lot more streams like this. Look at this, regular pen. Oh, yeah, actually, regular pen is pretty cool on some of this surface. That's pretty neat. 
Um, that's interesting too, sort of. Uh, but um, yeah, I don't know. Like, um, I'm gonna be doing more of these like live streams. I think I'll probably um, plan them out a little better. Today was more of just like an experiment. Man, I love these paint markers. I need. I definitely need to be using these more. And they dry like really matte color, which I don't know. On this black surface, like it's hard to see. Let's see if I bring it up. That's just yellow. And you can kind of see like it's sort of faded. Like it's matte. It's, it's opaque, but it's like faded. So I'm going to go over it again. I mean, well, this one... Uh, the red is less faded. I mean, I scribbled all over it, but so I guess it depends on, on the color. I think the pigments are different uh, depending on the color. But, you know, if just like you're painting a room, you know, certain colors are different, you know, like that. And sometimes you need a second, third coat, you know. So especially if you're using like white and whatnot. Also means you can get some... Um, like some tonal variation and stuff too, probably. You know, different kind of things react differently when you're drawing on black too. So that's that's a whole other factor. Yeah, it looks like with a, with a color like yellow, I'd probably have to go in like three, maybe four times even, you know, to really get it nice and, and opaque. Um, so. Sounds like you're in a sweet spot, loca location, location, location. Yeah, I think it's a pretty cool spot. I'm happy with where I'm, where I'm at. I think you know. Nathan says I want to take a trip to the Norman Rockwell Museum sometime this fall in the Berkshires. I've never been there. I should do that too. I haven't even gone to the Dr. Seuss Museum, and that's like right in you know, right in Massachusetts, Springfield. You know. It's so close. I need to do that. But yeah, Norman Rockwell Museum would rock. <laughs> it would rock well. Um, man, I just like using these markers. <laughs> Even though I'm like kind of pointlessly <laughs> making marks. Kind of like automatic drawing and stuff. Do you guys ever do um, automatic drawing? <clears throat> I think it's interesting. And, you know, sometimes I like to do it, but sometimes I feel like it's a little pointless, but it really isn't. It's just my weird mentality. But it's actually a pretty good practice that a lot of artists do, you know. I mean, just doodling in general is is kind of neat. Like you kind of, any kind of experimentation you do just for the sake of experimentation will inform like your art, you know, too. So it's, it's really good to experiment, I think, you know, and just play around, just play, you know, go into drawing without any expectations, you know, I mean, it's good to obviously go in with expectations too, but, you know. Oh, you know what would be cool with these paint markers to kind of try and replicate, like, the the color effects, like, in the, um, sorry, I was blocking stuff here with the text, Um to kind of replicate from like the spawn cover like that the power like thingy with the green and the yellows and stuff that might be kind of cool by the way this king spawn book is pretty neat like the art in it is really cool um art by javi fernandez it's so funny because i know another comic book artist some pete pete knows to Javier Hernandez, but this is Javi Fernandez. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> That's funny. Cover artist, Javi Fernandez. Um, um, <laughs> but no, there's an actual cover to this too. <laughs> but the art is like really cool. He's using like probably digital duo tone, I think is, is what this stuff is. But like, look at this page is really cool. Like the red shadow on the brick wall and like the, I guess, alleyway. That's neat. It's like a cool, like, you know, noir type of vibe, but then he gets like into this kind of stuff. It was like, that's kind of neat, you know? I think that's neat. It's actually pretty inspiring art, you know? People talk crap about like the, um, newer artists or whatever but i i see a lot of cool art when i go into the comic shop i see a ton of good art there's stuff i don't like but this this wouldn't be that this stuff is cool that's a really cool layout with the kind of faux panels sort of that's interesting interesting storytelling there and here we go the words what's that say thump or something damn that's a nice, good drawings. I like this this style. I think different people draw King Spawn um, from month to month. I don't know if it's the same artist, but this is like a sick, sick picture. He's like on the throne there and of some kind of throne. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I like this stuff a lot. So yeah. I just spoiled the whole book. Not that anybody's going to read it, but. <laughs> Javi moved up, yes. <laughs> he even changed his name. Yeah, let me bring up that spawn number one cover and see if I can play around with like kind of copying it a little bit. See if I get what kind of effects I can get. That's interesting. Oh yeah, I love this cover. Some people don't like this cover, but I freaking I remember when I first saw this cover. Um, you know, as a kid, I was like, are you kidding me? Like I need that yesterday. Like the first, I, I bought it like so quick. This stupid camera doesn't do it justice, but some people don't like it though. I think actually McFarlane even said he, he wasn't like a super fan of that cover, which I'm like, are you kidding me? Like I freaking, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I like, yeah, I agree, Nathan. I like how the King Spawn book uses Little Red for emphasis. Very cool. Absolutely. Definitely good design there, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, let's let's see if we can experiment a little with this kind of uh, Spawn thingy. Let's see. We'll we'll actually try to draw something relatively decent. You know what? I wonder. Ooh, I happen to have a red colored pencil. This is like a correction pencil, I think. Let's see how that works. Let me sharpen it. <clears throat> I don't know why I even have this. Oh, I have another one too. I have so many random, do you guys have that? Like just random tools? Oh yeah, because I remember like people were using those Cola race um, pencils. And uh, I think this is those. They're like, um, or a version of them. And they're like correction pencils specifically for teachers, you know? And I think I was using that for a while. And I got them from my sister in law, who's a teacher, I think I remember. Because she obviously had access. <laughs> so. Um, let's see. 
Nellie Sings, how are you doing? Greetings. This is wonderful, Marsh. Thank you. Continue to teach and share more knowledge. Hey, I'll do what I can. You know, I appreciate you for coming. All right. Let's see. Let's do a little drawing. So this is kind of, you guys aren't going to probably be able to see this super well. But that's all right. We'll, we'll get beyond the sketch stage. But this is kind of good. Like I said, this is all like in preparation for, you know, the spawn covers. So I'm trying to get like my technique down or get some interesting techniques going, you know. So I'm going to try to draw. But, but what's cool is like... Um, like you guys... Yeah, you guys actually can see that a little bit, but you, but it's just light enough to do like an under sketch. So that's that was one thing I was thinking about, like, you know, in preparing to to do like these covers. Like, is there? Can I do like a? Um, and this is going to be a hard hand to pull off because it's like a weird McFarland hand that's all like gnarly. So I might not pull off this hand all that well, but I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to try in front of everybody and fail, um, as I like to do. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, it's like I'm, I'm really glad to see that there's, there's ways I can do like an underdrawing, you know, and then layer on top of that um you know actual i guess drawing <laughs> um so let's see his this is like like mcfarland i don't even remember mcfarland drawing quite like this but this is of course like the first comic but this is like a really gnarly like claw situation that I don't think he normally draws like this, but, uh, you know, let's see, how old was I? I, I want to say like 13, 14 year old Marshall was pretty freaking digging it, pretty much digging it, you know? So let's try to draw some of these McFarlane-esque mus muscles, which are very much not um, not heavily informed by anatomy, anatomy classes, that's for sure. <laughs> but who cares? I don't care. I'm not heavily informed by anatomy classes either. Although I was thinking, like, as I was doing figure drawings, a friend of mine was telling me, he's like, um, he's like, when I did, um, took an anatomy class, my um when i did just figure studies like i was doing the other day um he's like when i when i did figure studies it, i felt like a lot more comfortable and was able to do them like quicker and stuff um and i was also thinking like when i do those like figure studies or if i'm if i'm ever like drawing from reference like copying um even ju just for practice you know um it's a really like meditative, like I get into like a really meditative, enjoyable state and it's pretty cool. Um, so I, I actually think that I would really enjoy taking some classes, some art classes and stuff. I mean, I've taken art classes in the past, but I'd like to maybe try again. Like maybe I can find some local ones, like instead of, I mean, there is like a local, like, um, what do you call it? A local uh, community college in this town that I'm in, which um, is actually really good. And I have taken design classes and drawing classes there. I actually learned a lot from those, but uh, you know, I don't know. I could probably afford, maybe I could afford to take a couple classes. Um, I don't know. I don't know. might be worth, worth trying. So I got this little drawing here going. It's, it's just like the McFarlane-esque hand. 
trying to think of what my next step should be. Like, you know, because there's like this cool glow effect. Like, see, this is where my knowledge is not so great. Like, I need to learn about acrylic painting, I think, because I, I think I want to play around with them, you know, more. And I know that when you do like these kind of effects and stuff, like I have learned, I, I have taken like painting classes, but uh, to pull it off like this, I'm not 100% sure, you know. I think, I think my best bet is to start with white and then work from there. I think that's my best bet. So I'm going to do that and then layer on top of that. So let's try that. And it doesn't have to be anything like crazy. Because um, you know, this is just a test, you know, of your local broadcast, whatever. <laughs> so Trying to like follow a little bit of the shape, you know, but not like being perfect or anything. So we got this like kind of shape going and now I just need to like color it in. And I mean, this is not gonna be like the most <laughs> exciting thing to watch, unfortunately, but what can I say? This is what we're doing here. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are kind of along for the ride and enjoying it and, uh, you know, maybe you're getting some drawing done yourself. Let's see. Nathan, I have so many tools, I forget what I have. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, I was like, I was about to buy, like, well, I, I wanted to buy these Posca markers, and they're like, for, for like five of them, it's like $55 or something. I'm like, ugh, I really don't need to be spending that much right now. And then I come home and I'm like, not only do I have Poscas, but I have Molotov freaking um, paint markers. I'm all set in the in the paint marker area right now, you know. <laughs> Nelly Singh says, yes, have many random tools for drafting old school architecture. Ooh, that's interesting. So you have um, you have ruling pens probably, which I have, this is like, like kind of the old school, like one, which, you know, people use also for calligraphy and for cool like calligraphy techniques. So this is like, you know, it goes with like the, you can use it with like a compass or whatever, but you can also take it out, out and use it on its own and you adjust this little thingy and it separates or tightens and you can get some interesting drawing effects with that. And it's the same thing as what I was doing earlier, trying to do earlier, not very successfully. This is also like a fancy calligraphy ruling pen. Um, I was telling people about it earlier. Uh, for a long time, I wanted one of these and I bought... And, but they were too expensive. But at one point I splurged and, um, you know, this was like handcrafted by like this guy in Russia who makes them. And also this folding pen was also part of it. And, uh, you know, these are more, you know, for calligraphy really, but, you know, uh, that would be cool, Marsh, taking class classes. Yes, continued education studies. It keeps you very sharp. Yeah, and the thing is, is like, I would love to get a degree, but I really don't care about getting a degree. So I would just take them for fun, you know. Looks sick, Marsh. I didn't know black canvas existed. Yeah, I know, right? And hey, Chris X Strings, how you doing? <laughs> Thanks for stopping in. Um, yeah, so like I said, you know, just for people, if you're coming in now, I have these black covers to sketch that I want to sketch. 
So I went out and got like, uh, they do have actually black canvas too, but I went out and bought a black sketchbook, you know, because um, I wanted to practice before I like committed anything to, you know, a piece of art that I'm going to like probably sell on eBay or something. So, so I've recently, that's another subject. I've recently kind of restarted my eBay journey. Um, it'd probably be better to do this with like actual paint and like a brush. It'd be quicker. Hmm. And I wouldn't waste the white paint. Let's do that. But the only thing is it's less opaque. It's probably more opaque. I'll use the cheap stuff for that. Oh, I still actually have. All right, let's do that. Um, where's that brush? Now I have so many tools here. I can't find, you know, what I'm looking for. Where is that brush I was using, though? It was right here. <laughs> How many times have you said that? Where's my keys? It was right here. I just had them. <laughs> I know I've had that conversation. It's right here. It's like literally right here. All right. Ta -da. Uh, 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 uh. So here we go. Let's go in with some some white. Hopefully, I can layer on top of this. I should be able to. It's just you know acrylic paint. Like you're supposed to be able to you know layer with this stuff. So that way it'll be quicker. I'm wasting less of my paint marker. So that's nice. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to doing some experimental comics, found objects comics, abstract comics, and also real comics comics. I mean, not that the other kind aren't real, but you know what I mean. I guess it could be a little messy, too, because it's like it's just like this effect, you know, um, this lighting effect. But I think it might look kind of interesting on this black paper. From the original Spawn comic. Anything that I mess up, I can always go back and fix. That's one thing, like, you know, I always hear people talk about digital art and stuff. And, you know, that, that topic just comes up all the time. And I've talked about it a bunch and, and all that. And. And I like digital art. I like doing digital art, but I also like traditional. You know, I'm, I'm into both. Um, but one argument that people will say sometimes for, like, um, you know, digital over traditional is, you know, you can go back, you can delete, you can, you know, it's kind of like a good thing and a not so good thing. Um, but one thing I was thinking, though, is like, well, you can do that with traditional, too. I mean, comics are, you know, old comics, like traditional comics that have been published are full of paste-ups, you know, where people paste up a piece of paper and redraw over whatever it was because it was a bad drawing or they have some stupid rule at DC that says, you know, we have to cover all the Kirby superman faces because it doesn't look on model um <laughs> but uh you know um there's all but there's also like there's other you know there's white out or correction whatever like even just taking acrylic acrylic paint and painting over something that came out not good and then drawing on top of it you know now it's a little bit it's a little bit limited and you know, it's it's not as clean as, you know, a digital, doing it digitally for sure. And it's not as quick um, when it comes to correcting something. But it's not, like, impossible, you know. <laughs> and if you have, like, kind of a messier style, like a, a more fun, like, I don't know, expressive style sometimes, like, say, like a Bill Sienkiewicz or something, like, you know, <laughs> happy accidents are, are you know, it's, it's more forgiving, you know, I feel like. Um, so, you know, 
I say you know a lot. Sorry. I got to learn how to not do that. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I don't know. It's just interesting because I always hear that argument, you know, about digital. And I'm like, well, you know, that's not entirely true. <laughs> But I guess you can't like make every point with every sentence you say. So, <laughs> do, do, do. yeah, this is probably even though even this is slow, it's it's a lot quicker than uh, doing it with the marker. All right, where's my tube of paint? <laughs> Here it is. Ran out of the white ink. Or white paint, white ink. So I'm going to kind of layer from light to dark, I guess. I don't know. That's, I think that if, you know, again, like I'm kind of rusty on the painting. It's been a while since I've done any kind of painting stuff outside. Well, I have two pieces up on eBay right now that are watercolored. And uh, those are, you know, they're, they're okay. They're not amazing. I, I enjoyed doing them and I'm, happy with them i'll see if anybody buys them that'll be cool but um you know i definitely want to get better of course um but i did them with watercolor and uh you know i'm i'm a little bit quicker to to get back to watercolor like but even that like there's techniques like that i see people do on on videos and stuff and when I try to do them, it doesn't work. And I'm like, I don't get it. But I think it's just because I don't have good quality paint and good quality paper uh, canvas. You know, it, the, the, the paper slash canvas you use for watercolor and the actual paint actually is pretty important, I think. You know, when you're using the cheaper stuff, it's just you're not going to be able to do some of those like wet on wet techniques very well. And that's what I was like trying to do. So. But yeah, there we go. Should I do some red um, for the hand? I guess, why not, right? I think I'll be able to layer over it. See, that's the thing too, is, is I, I've probably done watercolor more. And so with watercolor, you if you need bright, bright areas, one of the techniques, one of the main techniques is that you got to let some of the paper shine through like you got to kind of plan your your highlights in advance you know but with opaque paints it might you know like there's the some people work from dark to light and some people work from light to dark you know nathan says we used to call ruling pens ruining pens <laughs> i used to always get blobs when drawing lines yeah i mean it's like one of those things that you need to like probably get a good technique i don't really know like i i haven't used them enough and, and when i do use them it's meant to be like weird and experimental and blobby parts kind of are okay you know Nelly sings, yes, that's really cool stuff and tools. Just start create, just start create and create. Agreed, Marsh. Blending blended tradition techniques with technology techniques. I did that stuff in my career in fashion design. Neat. So you did fashion design, huh? That's pretty cool. I always have been like, like not not really knowing anything about fashion design, but um, I've seen like, like I like when they show like those pictures of like, you know, in a row, there's just like different like outfits or whatever. And it, it just reminds me of like characters to de design in comics and stuff. Like, so that's, that's kind of how we do it in comics as well. You know, a lot of times not, I mean, everybody's different, but another thing is adding a little water to acrylics turns it into almost like a watercolor -y type of thing, I guess, which is, you know, I kind of did here sort of by accident, but now that I'm talking about it, I'm kind of doing it. <laughs> um, 
and I don't know if that makes sense here in this in this uh, use, but I'll probably once it's dry, I might have to do a second coat probably. But it's kind of good if this coat is light because you know it's just uh, it's like gonna I'm gonna need to do some layers anyways with this because it's gonna be like this interesting like effect i mean i don't think i'm gonna pull it off i doubt i'm gonna pull it. i mean i'm looking at a digitally i don't know like how this was made like i heard about how it was made recently and now i kind of forget but the first spawn cover might actually even be traditional paint because like he uh, he commissioned a specific like colorist to do and you can see it throughout the 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 first few spawn covers there's like this painterly effect and it's it's really cool like i love it um i don't know if every probably not everybody feels the same but i, I think it's really cool it's a very painterly effect and it i just remember it just feeling like and looking like it like really fresh growing up you know i was like that is cool you know and that was it's actually surprising that i felt that way because i was so enamored with like todd Mar mcfarland's draw like art drawing like his inking that like it kind of almost should have felt almost like blasphemy you know to like geez like i just want to see your drawings man like and and that's how i felt when greg capullo took over because i was like i want mcfarland to draw this that's why i'm into this like <laughs> And it wasn't long after Capullo took over that I dipped out and, you know, never really went back except for from time to time. But now I look back at the Capullo stuff and I'm like, oh, that stuff is really cool. It's an early Capullo, which is interesting. Um, it's it's not as refined as, as he draws now, but uh, still pretty cool in its own right. So... Hey, thanks, CB. I'm just trying to copy the the spawn cover hand, you know, from the first spawn. You know, so just kind of practicing with with techniques on on black canvas to see see what kind of tech stuff I can possibly pull off with these spawn king spawn cover sketch covers that I got. So let's see, Nelly sings. Nelly, do you sing or is that your name? <laughs> it's a cool name if it fits your name too. Um, I wanted to work in comics, but Marvel, Image, DC, Dark Horse was uh, rejected. So I went a different route, the fashion industry, except the, in the fashion industry, except to me then music industry and now movie and film industry. Wow. You so you've worked in all those things. That's pretty awesome. I mean, I've you know, I've made music and art um but and I've done a lot of different things with my art. Like I did like toys and stuff, but you know, I had I've never had like a career in any of them. I hope to one day possibly before I die, have a career in one, but I also enjoy just having fun doing it. <laughs> so, oh, we talked about this before, refreshing your memory. <laughs> cool. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I, I, you know, <laughs> I don't, it's hard to remember everything. <laughs> Maybe I'm getting too old. Uh, yes, I do sing also. Cool. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> do, 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 do. That's awesome. I, I guess um, I'd like to sing. Actually, I was, um, I don't know what kind of music you're into, Nelly, or anybody else here. Um, probably none of you are into this group. I don't know. Who knows? But 
I just listened to the new Sylvan Esso album today. It's like a indie pop group. And uh, I really like their music personally. You know, not super hardcore at all. Not hardcore even a little. Um, <laughs> but they use, um, you know, they use the kind of synthesizers I like, you know, and uh, they just make really cool songs. And I like pop music anyways, so. Um, you know, it does not like, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I just like all kinds of music. I mean, I'm a hip hop head, a nineties hip hop head, but I like all kinds of music. So. Do, do, do. so the question is, yeah, I guess I use, that's weird. Like I use the paper um for the black part you know i mean why why would i paint it black like you don't paint white on a white canvas unless you've already put other layers down you know we're definitely see this looks almost like a christmas thing <laughs> which is kind of weird um, but we're definitely into the uh, ugly stages of the painting. There might only be an ugly stage to this painting. <laughs> we'll see. But we'll see what we can do. We'll have some fun. So I think the next layer probably would be yellow. Yeah. So... You know, I really don't know if I'm doing this like super right. I'm probably not, but I think I think starting with white made sense. I don't know. Let's do some yellow though. Uh, I wish Dee Dee was here. She was actually. She had a video today, and uh, but I feel like she'd be able to give me some tips. I I was asking her like in her video today, like, how, do you have any tips for drawing on black paper or making art on black paper? And she gave me like a couple ideas and stuff, which is, you know, basically layering and stuff with like acrylic and, and just, you know, using like the color, like that's why I went out and got like the Prismacolor pencil and stuff. Um, but uh, so yeah, that's, that's cool. Um, and so, but I bet like, you know, she just knows about painting, you know, and I, I want to, I need to learn more about painting again because <laughs> it's been so long. So I guess I want to, it's kind of weird though. It doesn't really make sense what I'm doing here because I'm layering up, you know, it's like I already went with one color and now I'm laying it lit, but it does, I guess it ha I have to do that. I have to do that white layer um, when I'm doing stuff like this, cause it's just gotta, it needs that brightness, you know, to, to work off of. I mean, I suppose I could have put down yellow first. So it's like this white, yellow and green situation that's going on with like this power effect, you know? And, and it's like, it's, it's not only green, it's like this golden green glowy thing, you know, and it's even in the hand a bit, like, you know, like, so it's like, it's this interesting thing. And I'm not sure exactly how to replicate it, but we're going to give it a, the good old college try, you know, the good old not going to art school try. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. I don't I don't really know what I'm doing, guys. <laughs> but we'll see. Maybe it'll turn into something cool. Maybe it won't. <laughs> Maybe it won't is probably the likely scenario. <laughs> I 
I think I'm doing like a glaze. <laughs> I know that's a term they use in painting. Like, am I doing a glaze? Am I painting? Am I an official painter? Like I think about like, uh, what about Bob? <laughs> and they tie him to like the sailboat pole and he goes by he's like, look, I'm sailing. I'm sailing. I'm a sailor now. I'm, I'm sailing. <laughs> I sail. <laughs> That's what I'm doing right now. I'm painting. I'm a painter. Look at me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is going to be the worst painting ever. But, you know, I do have to really thank, like, the fact that, like, my high school had a good art program because... I probably didn't get the most out of it because I was a stupid teenager, but I tried to because I did take every art class I possibly could because I knew from that at that point that I wanted to be an artist and all that. But, um, but I still I wanted to make comics, and they don't care about my desire to make comics. <laughs> and, uh, anyways, um, so like. I did have painting classes and stuff. So I learned some basics and I definitely have to thank, like be grateful that I had that because it's because of that I feel like that I ever could even do anything with like that I could do okay with the digital like coloring right out of the gate. Like not that I was amazing, but I, I, I could do okay with it because I had learned some basics of color coloring and color theory and um just i don't know techniques and stuff like i definitely learned some things let's see what else who we, what we got here check in the chat um oh we got some good chats going on there's people talking about a lush beer a lush beard <laughs> i like that um let's see Blah, blah. Hot in her. <laughs> What's up, blah, blah? Cool name. Chris X Strings. Marsh, are there American artists that illustrate similar to Junji Ito? Hmm. Anybody in the chat know? Oh, looks like <laughs> quickly. Kate K K. Ooh, who has a spawn logo? That's cool. <laughs> Um, says, yes, there is. I don't know who they are, man, um, but hopefully KSK will help you with that. Yes, no mistakes, only happy accidents, of course. Bob Ross is my spirit animal. Very cool. Love all music, Marsh classic to Motown to rock to hip hop to country, etc. Wish I could come on the show but just started my film project doing scout locations for my next film wow that's cool i, I mean i might have to have you on the show sometime if you want to because uh sounds like there's a lot of interesting things you could talk about sometimes an artist doesn't know their destination and that's okay peter you're awesome thank you <laughs> Nelly sings, yes, an official painter soon, like Bob Ross. Yes. <laughs> Seagull Dreams, what's up, dude? AKA way, AKA Ways hitting your videos with a big thumbs up. Yes. Thank you for the thumbs up and the subscribes. Everyone, anyone, feel free to subscribe. Uh, I'm gonna be doing more, more vids like this, I think. Um you know, where we're just kind of hanging out and doing some art. I can't make it live a lot of times, but you rock, Marsh. Keep killing it. Thank you, sir. You rock as well. All right. Um, so we got yellow on there now, so that's good. <laughs> um, the next thing would be green. Green. And that, I think, is where it gets maybe more interesting, possibly. I mean, I could always 
see that's the thing is like you have too many tools and it's like well what tool do i use if i use this tool like it's probably better to stay stick with one medium at least at least when you don't know what you're doing like i like me <laughs> um I, I mean i am very much interested in in love and want to do you know mixed medium art but uh today is probably not the day for that at least not like not when I'm trying to do one specific thing. I mean, it's it's okay to always experiment, but so let's get some green. Let's get some mean green. Let's see, I wish I don't have like. Well, if I, I probably do somewhere, but I don't see a brush like a tiny tiny brush. So that may pose a little bit of a problem, but uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I almost feel like this is the time where I would do like, like water down the paint a little bit and do like a, I don't know, a glaze. Is that a glaze? I'm going to start calling everything a glaze because I don't know what a glaze is. But uh, yeah, let's start from this end. Oh yeah. You can't even see that on the screen. <laughs> uh, it's like I'm just like putting down nothing. <laughs> Let's see if we can get some more pigment in there. Oh yeah, that's a little better. Yeah, this is actually not far from the effect. Well, it's far from the effect, but it's not like as far as I expected. Maybe I know something or something. <laughs> I don't know. Do, do, do. I should let some of these yellow, this yellow shine through, but I can, I should really be able to keep going back and forth in and out a little bit, right? With acrylic, do you think so? Or, or am I delusional? I really should go over these lines. I don't know. I don't know what I should do. I'm acting like I know what I should do, but it does kind of go through here too. It's like let us see. I almost I would really like to get into gouache at some point because it seems like that's like from what I've understood, it kind of seems like that's one of the more um, flexible, you know, paint mediums, I guess. Because it's kind of like I guess it's like a, a mix. I think it's a mix between acrylic and watercolor it's like it's like I, I think it's not plastic like it's not acrylic but it it can act like acrylic and can be as opaque as acrylic which is is kind of it's like taking the best from both worlds um and uh I don't know, like, but it's not plastic, so I, I don't know. I, I'm trying to explain something. I don't know what I'm talking about, so. But I'm pretty sure gua, gouache kind of is like one of this kind of best of both worlds scenarios. I know a lot of people really like to work in gua, gouache. My friend, uh, Eddie Crosby, he's done a bunch of, he did a bunch of art for me. It was really cool. And I love it. He's, he's easily one of my favorite artists. Like, I just love what he does. And he always, like, he kind of has, like, this con 
uh, cartoony style, but he can do realism too. And he uses gouache a lot. I almost, I, like I, if you're on Facebook with me, like um, it's pretty often that I'll re, re uh, post his, his art, you know, because he's just that awesome. So you guys can't really see it yet, but it is starting to get that effect a little. Uh, it's really, this camera sucks, but that's probably about the best view you can get of it. It's still not showing, though, like the depth of color. It's not great. Still, it's not great, but it's it's like starting to get there. Starting to get there. Frank's here. What's up, Frank? Back from church. Cool. Nellie says, I learned a lot of stuff from Bob Ross to do backgrounds and locations for fantasy environments, forests, mountains, lakes, waterfalls, winter scenes, put in night's dragon battles, Lady of the Lake. Yeah. he's That's kind of his thing, right? The, the backgrounds and stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah. Just got back from church and you're watching Hell Spawn. <laughs> Watch out, Frank. Yeah, it's it's a uh, spawn sort of like I'm kind of experimenting with with just black. I, b I bought this like black sketchbook paper, but the reason why I got it is so I can experiment and kind of work my way up to i got two of these king spawn covers i want to do like uh sketch cover art on them so yeah that's what's going on yeah yes the hand of spawn <laughs> so i'm i'm copying like you know the old todd mcfarlane spawn cover but just just that hand like i'm trying to see if i can kind of replicate the color effects a little bit in my own way just to as a practice thing you know yeah sounds like the next storyline probably yeah hello deist how you doing man are you using paint markers or oil pastels yes but no, not really. I'm not using any oil or pastels <laughs> or oil pastels. <laughs> but I am using paint markers and acrylic paint for the most part in this particular thing. I'm at church 90% of the week. Cool. Hannah Montana of paints, the best of both worlds. <laughs> I mean... I, to be honest, I don't know anything about Hannah Montana, so <laughs> I'm not sure if I understand that joke, but still, it sounds funny. Do 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 do. So I'm going to try to deepen some of these edges, or maybe I should just use a different green, a darker green to do that. Maybe it's time to go in with the paint markers because I'm going to need to get some more precision going. I don't know. But yeah, I'd like to get into gouache, you know. But I guess first I got to like figure out what the heck I'm doing with this acrylic stuff. Speaking about Sylvanesso, the group that I was talking about, she, I was watching an um, interview with the with them and the girl is the singer and and uh she was saying she mentioned like every time she goes to write a song she feels like she doesn't know what she's doing <laughs> but yet she's got many albums under her <laughs> her belt and she's you know winning awards and stuff for her her uh, music and, and all that like her songwriting is actually really good um but, you know, even she, you know, feels like, like, I feel like that happens with painting, you know, or a lot of art, really, you know, 
you kind of feel like crap. I don't, I don't know. Like, and then especially when you get into the middle of it and it's not looking so good and you're like, crap, I don't know if, if this is going to work. Like, what did I get myself into? You know, I know I feel like that a lot of times. So let's see, what can we do here? Well, we could do, like, I kind of need this part, I guess, to dry a little bit. Um, I could maybe work on the hand a little bit more. I need to deepen. I don't know if I should deepen the kind of um, reds or lighten them, like put in some, some more. I think I'll put in like some brighter red going on here. See if I can define these, you know, McFarlane-esque muscles a little bit. A little bit. And then the, the thing that's weird is like, he did like this kind of funky like effect in the hand and I don't know if I'm really going to be able to replicate that so much so I don't know that that part I'm not like super like trying to do but I don't know it's really weird like I don't really know how to approach that part I'm trying though. I'm trying. <laughs> Just try to get that like really saturated red in a couple parts here. Do, 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 do. Luckily, with acrylic, it does dry pretty quick, usually. So that's, I think that's like the sort of the advantage and downfall. Like everything's got its strengths and weaknesses. I've never really done much with oil. And I know that the fact that it's wet and you can keep going back into it is kind of a strength, but it's also something that drives probably acrylic painters kind of nuts. You know, so, um, yeah, I don't know. I know that's kind of a thing. What I really need to do is uh, probably, <laughs> you know, do some very simple painting exercises, not on black paper. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. I have this kind of really nice deep dark green here. It might work. It might be good to use. Uh. I don't know if that's a good color to use. It doesn't really look like the other colors. That's it's more. This is more like an aqua marine type green. Let's see what this one looks like. I do have deeper greens in the paints, but yeah, this one might be good to use, but. I'm going to want to get a deeper green too, though, but oh, let's give it a shot. It's tough too because, you know, McFarlane, of course, put like stupid amounts of detail in like 
like these bubbles and stuff. And <laughs> like, oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? <laughs> you know, and 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 they talk about like how they would just like get into these parts where it's like, okay, I got a lot of details to draw. Let me let me call up Rob real quick and <laughs> or let me call up, you know, Eric Larson real quick and chew his ear for a while while I'm sitting here and putting like every inch, every possible detail you could think, you know, into, uh, into this, these, you know, bubbles or this debris that's fallen from a building or like all that stuff. So it's like, oh my gosh, why would I ever try to copy a McFarlane drawing? <laughs> I mean, I'll just do it my own way, I guess, which I don't even know if I know what my own way means, but kind of bubbly. I think that's a tricky thing anyways, like with comics, right? Like how do you do like all these kind of effects? Like how do you make something look like it's glowing? I mean, even if you're just doing black and white, you know, especially like how do you make something look like it's exploding or, you know, all these different possible effects. Like, I mean, obviously throughout the years, there's been like some some strides in that area and, and people just kind of copy the way another person's done it. And that's kind of okay too, but um, then he's got these little kind of globules just floating in places too. So he's got like, these little guys and another little guy and <laughs> it's kind of interesting. So it's like Kirby crackle, but like power, like painted powers. <laughs> it's a whole different level. It's kind of cool. I just start noodling around with it, you know. It's hard not to get lost in detail when you're uh, copying a McFarlane thing. I'm going to try my best to just kind of come up with my own language for this and not try to copy his stuff too much because when I'm sitting here trying to copy it I'm like uh what am I doing here like it, it's it doesn't I think I can make it look kind of my own version of cool you know and that will be pretty satisfying and that's kind of the point that's the point here is I'm trying to like just figure out some cool techniques to use for my own iteration of, you know, whatever it is that. And I like to get messy sometimes, you know, and just, I'm already kind of like in the new direction. <laughs> Feels better, you know. I'm kind of at the point where I'm like, now this is becoming more inspired by than copied, you know, which is cool.
Do, 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 do. Let's see what the chat's saying. Yeah, it's starting to look a little more like something. Uh, you guys are talking to each other. Anyone else here drawing anything while watching this? I'm working on a comic. I'll suggest adding a finger to the to the hand. Oh, you see? Yeah, well, <laughs> I haven't really defined the fingers yet. Um, Frank is drawing sketch cards or is going to just finished using the transfer method on a few panels. It's pretty much copying and pasting of traditional drawing. I used, used it to keep some character proportions consistent. Cool. Wow, that's true. Many artists say that when creating like Jack White and songwriter Bernard uh, Tupin, who collaborates with Elton John, who had the good fortune to work with, name drop, just sharing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you were probably, um, you know, commenting on what I was saying about Sylvan Esso. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're right. You know, I love Jack White, by the way, and Elton John. I'm not sure who... Bernard J. Tupin is or Taupin. I love Todd's work, like drawing Felix the Cat in some covers of The Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, he tried to hide Felix the Cat in like every issue, I guess. I need uh, some drink some water real quick. There we go. All right, what else we got? Um, going to call it a night. Have a great one. Yeah, Peter, man, you too. Thanks for coming by. <clears throat> Glad Man Comics. Just sketching faces in my sketchbook. Been experimenting with drawing in a 90s anime style. That sounds cool. Marsh, that Hulk sketch cover you posted looked great. Thanks, man. It sold the other day. I sent it off yesterday on eBay. I got a couple other things up on eBay, too. Marsh, very wonderful art study. Todd drew Detective Comics, Incredible Hulk, and Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, he did, a, he did a few things. He did some Batmans, too. I have those issues. <clears throat> Dooby doop doo. <coughs> Excuse me. I got to be careful with how many little dotty things I do. I'm not going to go too much more crazy with this part of it, but I'm going to do a little bit more just to kind of fill things out best I can so um, one thing and I, if you were here those who are here early you know, earlier might have heard me talking about um, Dee Dee like I was kind of chatting with her in her stream today not on the stream but like you know in the chat and uh, one thing that she does, like, I, I really dig her videos and stuff. One thing that she does that I'm thinking about doing myself, I think might be fun. I don't know if she does it every video or what, but a lot of times she does, um, like, like, giveaways, like, in her videos, like, either whatever she's drawing or like if she's talking about some books that she has, she might give away one book. Actually, I have some stuff I actually would 
I think people would like that that I actually wouldn't mind giving away because I have like doubles of things and stuff too. And I think it might be fun like to do some giveaways and stuff. Like even like say this drawing actually came out good. <laughs> I mean, I'd be like cool to do. It would be cool to like just do giveaways of like sketches I'm working on or whatever for fun. Or I don't know. What do you guys think of that? Like in random videos, maybe in most videos, I don't even know, you know, could be fun. All right, I think we're good with the crazy detail dotty things. Let's see. Oh, maybe I'll. It's hard to know when to stop, you know. And these dots, like there's almost like a science to them. Like you want to get, like you kind of want to put them, what I've learned is you you want to kind of make them look like they're clustered sort of. And it's it's hard to make them not like too evenly spaced. That's, that's the difficult part. But it looks more natural if they're kind of cl clustered and if the shapes are very, like are the size of the dots are varied. That's what I notice at least. Um, and you gotta be careful not to put too many. Like I'm, I'm already kind of verging on the possible too many, I think, but you know, it's, it's really hard to know when to stop. I think I'm going to stop, <laughs> but it's good to have like a good uh, <laughs> dot to whatever ratio. Anyways. All right, what's the next step? Let's see. Um, is, uh, oh, Frank, is Jeff's video, he usually goes on what on friday nights or or i think like thursday night slash friday morning right but i did see he, he had another live stream or something that was supposed to come on and i it looked like he's gonna talk specifically about a certain topic or something instead of like like maybe he's trying to do more than just the live oh that's right he said he wasn't gonna have they weren't gonna have a live stream this week actually so I don't know. I don't know what's going on over there, but I'm looking for. I'm always happy to. I like Jeff's show, you know. I've always liked Jeff's show. Glad Man Comics. That'd be pretty cool. Nathan, sure, give away something could be very exciting. I agree. Pasca paints. Never tried them, but been meaning to. Yeah, you know, they're pretty cool. And and you know, I ha I've had these for <sighs> over a year now and I forgot that I even had these. And I also these Molotovs are also really good quality, um super good quality. They're like graffiti um paint markers. And uh these are just as good, maybe even better than the the Pascas, but they're both just really good. And I'm 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 really digging them, you know, so far. And and like I said, this is the first time I've really given them a good shot. I'm happy with them. Frank says, yeah, he streams Thursdays, but he won't be on this Thursday. So this one tonight is a premiere. Okay. Well, it'll be interesting to see whatever it ends up being. All right. So I wonder, I wonder if I put water to this paint if it would uh, fade because if it does fade, I'll try over here where it's less important. If it does, that could be a cool thing. 
Yeah, it does lift it up. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit, it's not quite getting the effect. Like I was hoping like I could kind of really blend it in, but you know, there's other ways I can do it. That's, that was just like kind of a, a little bit of a test. Um, another way I could do it is, um, let's see. I guess I could just use paint. <laughs> uh, just do what makes sense, Marsh. Let's see. Well, yeah, I could just kind of uh, see. That's the problem. Is there a way to kind of blend it, though? There probably is. Or maybe I should have done that when it was wet. Hmm. That's the part I'm not really sure. Let's see. What if I do something like this? Yeah, I don't know. That's probably too wet, though. I don't know. Like, would you guys want to have this thing as a giveaway? I don't think this is that good, though. <laughs> I don't know. Could do it, though. Could just do it. little paint experiment, you know? Yeah, it's kind of a cool effect. I think it's kind of working the way I wanted it to in my own little way. <laughs> I don't hate it. I don't hate it, and that's always good. <laughs> uh, we'll see. It's not finished yet. Maybe I'll hate it before the end of the night. I love, like... When like you see the, the the paint stroke, that's one thing that you, well, you get it with digital if you feel like you, you can get it with digital too, but you really, there's really <laughs> like, there's no saying, you know, digital is inferior anymore. Like you can make digital look traditional at this point, you know, we're, we're there now, so. Heck, humans don't even have to make art anymore, it seems. You know, AI is taking over the world. Uh, that's, that almost gives me a little anxiety, to be honest. But at the same time, I also enjoy playing with the AI tools, you know, with art and stuff. So it's like, I feel like I'm playing with a dangerous tool that's going to take over. <laughs> and make any art I do be irrelevant. <laughs> I hope that doesn't end up being the case. That's crazy. I'm, I'm actually kind of getting this effect in there. Let's see what else we can do. Let's get the white, kind of do the same thing with this like dry brush with the white. I'm actually surprised that I'm able to I shouldn't be surprised. I know I know how to do some of this stuff a little, but <laughs> oh boy. I wonder what kind of definitely like what kind of paint they use like with this um with these uh markers because it's like a flatter kind of paint sort of. It's weird. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. Kind of getting that glow effect going a bit. There's probably, I'm sure there's much better ways to do this, but uh, I don't know. I'm just giving it my best shot. Let's see. Was working, living in Detroit for a year, designed for Carhartt. Jack White just started Third Man Records. Had lots of classic rock bands I met and worked with Hot Tuna, Stony and the Jagged Edge. Uriah Heap. Wow. Got some experience under your belt, huh? Thanks for the heads up, Sal. I'll try to watch Jeff tonight. Cool. Yeah, I don't know if anybody's interested in uh, <laughs> doing a giveaway with even this piece of art. <laughs> it might be kind of fun. Give it a shot. Or not. That's cool, too, because honestly, it's like at the same time, it is like, I don't know. I guess it doesn't really matter. I don't care. Either way is fine with me. <laughs> do, 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 do. It's weird because there's like definitely these like cloudy areas going on here. And then, you know, last thing you would do is kind of go in with the highlights and stuff. But with this, it's like, it's kind of interesting. Let's see. See if we can kind of get some of this kind of whatever's going on with the hand a little bit in here. Yeah, this is uh, it's pretty cool. I'm actually glad I tried doing this because it's like, yeah, I just. always feel like I'm not going to be able to pull something off. And then just the more I work on it type of thing, you know, the more it's like, oh, maybe I can pull something off that's kind of okay, you know. I've definitely felt like that a lot of times with art. Got kind of going back and forth and in and out and until you finally get to a place where it's like, okay, this looks kind of cool. <laughs> so maybe we should get some blue in that arm to bring in a little more definition. Do, 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 do. Sorry, it would be like quicker art, I guess, if it was, uh, you know, if I was just penciling and inking, I suppose. <laughs> Not that I'm trying to be quick or anything, but I'm just trying to have fun. And uh, kind of play around. Mm 
Kind of, it's like a cross hatching stage, of, but with paint. <laughs> ah, kind of messed up there, but it doesn't really matter that much. It's kind of getting there. That's another thing with painting that I learned, you know, back in the days is just like, it's surprising what colors you see. Like if you're, if you're drawing from like, you know, observe observation, like, you know, say you see it, you know, you're trying to paint like a, like a fire hydrant or something, you know, it's obviously red, right? But depending on the, the time of day, depending on the sha the shadows and the highlights and all kinds of different factors, you'll see other colors. And if you're really observant, that's, that's something you have to train yourself to see what you don't, even if you don't expect a certain color to, it's almost like you got to be like honest with yourself and like, and, and see or and you can also and you can use like opposite colors to like like a good example is like um i don't know if you, you might have watched like coloring tutorials for digital um comics and stuff um and sometimes a kind of a quick way quick fix or a quick way to like bring in some some nice deep shadows is a lot of times they'll say use purple, you know, even even if it doesn't seem to, you know, necessarily make sense to use purple. Use purple and it, you know, and it's not just purple, really. It's it's like just the opposite color, you know, the of, in the color wheel is really like kind of the principle. But you can kind of always use purple though, like it's just just happens to work really good you know in most most cases uh but here i'm kind of doing the same thing but with blue sort of not very successfully <laughs> so yeah it's just little things you kind of learn sometimes it's like even it's even though it's black, it's like the way it was painted, there's a lot of blue in here. You know, from the painting I'm copying. It's kind of tough because I'm not looking, you know, this isn't something I'm doing from observation of an actual photograph of something real. So it's harder because the all the colors and everything is like made up and it's informed off of real things, whoever colored this you know, observed in their past practice, you know, everything is done from reference one way or another. It might just be the reference in your mind, you know. It's kind of... Yeah, people say it's cheating if you use reference, but I don't agree. You know, I mean, it, it obviously, I mean, I don't want to get into the big reference debate or anything here at the moment, but, you know, obviously, you know, you don't want to like trace or whatever, but sometimes tracing is, is worth, is, is needed or worthwhile or useful, especially in comics and with deadlines and stuff. You know, there is kind of, I think there is a place for tracing, but uh, it's kind of, use it carefully. I don't know. Use it as a tool. Don't lean on it as the way you do art. <laughs> I 
I tend to not trace too much because gen in general, but you know, maybe sometimes I'll knock out a shape like of a cityscape or something. And I don't know if this is even right, but you know, I'll just get the shapes down and then I'll throw, throw the reference away and then just draw my own buildings, you know, but I at least got like kind of the perspective down instead of kind of mapping it out myself, you know, there's been times where I've done that. I'm not saying you should do one thing or another, but I don't know. I personally think it's kind of, I don't, I wouldn't judge an artist for doing that. Just put it that way. But there is certain lengths where sometimes artists go to that. I'm like, I don't like that so much. Like, it's too much, you know. But that's just me. I wonder if I should be just doing this with the pen. That probably makes more sense with the paint marker. Let's try that. It's kind of a different red, though. That's the only problem. Uh, that might have been a bit of a mistake. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, I wonder color pencil. I mean, that's what this whole point of this thing is anyways, is experimenting. Let's try this darker. The problem is I don't have like a thinner brush to use. So, and I'm not even, I kind of forgot about the whole idea of like mixing colors. <laughs> So, you know, I'm not even attempting that, which that's a whole other part, which is good to do. I'm painting into wet paint, which kind of doesn't make any sense, but let's maybe not do that, I guess. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, let's see. Looks great, Marsh. Thanks. Play around and having fun. For the love and joy of the art process, then sharing it with everyone. Yeah, for sure. Glad Man Comics. Tracing is great for study the form, for studying the forms, your reference. I tend to do that then redraw the image with the trace image as my new reference. Yeah, there you go. I think that's okay. I think that's fine. Personally, some people would definitely vehemently disagree with that, but those people wouldn't be me. I did at one point kind of have a little bit of a rant about it, on my YouTube channel when I kind of, I feel like I didn't really understand at that time. Now I'm kind of, I guess I kind of have backtracked on that one a little bit. I feel like there is maybe a use for it. But, you know, I reserve the right to change my mind whenever I feel like it. So how about that? <laughs> it's kind of a weird drawing of a hand that I'm referencing from here. So I don't know that I'm going to get it all that great. And I don't know that I have kind of the right tool to get into the detail very well. You know, it's there's no ink, finished inked lines on this piece, you know. 
I mean, I could go and do finish think lines, but it's not what, you know, I'm copying isn't that. So it's a little bit tough to figure out how to interpret it. So yeah, the hand kind of looks janky, but I kind of like, it's just kind of, it's how it is in the picture and sort of, it's weird. It's a very weird thing to try to translate. Like I probably wouldn't have drawn the hand like this <laughs> if it was me. I love dry brush technique, like, it's really helpful. I don't know if I really know how to blend any other way, to be honest. Oh my gosh, what a mess. <laughs> I almost want to go in with ink and like, do some other stuff with it, but I'll try to clean it up by, um, you know, you just do like this kind of push and pull with the colors. So I'll get some, some of the yellows and, and whites in there and kind of pull back and pull forward. So I guess yellows, what I should do next here. You know, one thing that I don't do a lot when, um, when we're like even doing like an ink piece is like, I don't break out like, um, like if I'm working with using a pen to ink something, I won't change to a different size. Like if I'm using microns and stuff, it's kind of rare that I'll change to a different size. Like I get lazy about that. And then I just end up inking with the same size. And that's probably not a good thing, you know. And I feel like I'm kind of doing that here with this brush, but I don't have another brush. So I guess I have an excuse. <laughs> uh. Kind of hard to push that yellow back in there, but I don't want to, I want to be careful that I don't do it too much. So I'm like kind of trying to go lightly. <laughs> It's an abstract hand. <laughs> Everything suddenly becomes abstract when you mess up. Do, 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 do. I don't really know why the reflection is on this side of these little spikes. 
Like it doesn't quite make sense, but that's how they have it. <laughs> do 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 do. Yeah, I wish I had a kind of a way to. Like I wish this was darker, or I had one that was darker. Because then I could get in there and define that a little better. So, anyways. Do-do-do-do. Let's see. Like going in and out and in and out. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of there. I mean, it's not it's certainly not as good as the actual thingy, but. You know, we kind of did it. You know, I don't think, I don't know that I'm going to be able to do a ton better than that. What I can do is go in and, and put some highlights in. I mean, I could really go ham and do a bunch more stuff, but, you know. I guess the more time you spend with it, the more uh, the better it will be. Not always, but you know, it, at this level, <laughs> it kind of is that. Do 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 Just kind of putting in some highlights to. Actually, that's kind of what I could do to define this hand a little bit better, maybe. It's not exactly like this in the, you know, thingy, in the reference, but there's a little bit of this kind of thing going on. And I think it works anyways. This is, again, the part where it's like kind of reinterpret it your own way a little bit. I don't know. Do 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 do. All righty, I got that. I got that. Let's see if I can just. 
couple more little bits here and there. Just really McFarlane it out a little bit. <laughs> uh, more details, more details. <laughs> I'm definitely digging, though, this, uh, some of these, the way some of these techniques are kind of looking. They're pretty interesting. And there's like there's kind of this reflective shadow, but it doesn't all make sense either. So do 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 do. Yeah, I don't know. I think I kind of did something there. <laughs> it's not amazing, but it's it's a thing. So I'm going to do more of these kind of videos, I think, you know, um, and, you know, I'd love to, you know, have you guys hang out and all that stuff. We'll see how, how much and whatever, but I like this whole like top down scenario and, um, I just like hanging out with my peoples, you know? That's fun. So, yeah. Here I am kind of McFarlaning out some of this, like <laughs> probably going way too far. But I guess if there's anything I can do that on, it would be uh, McFarlane copy thing. Do 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 do. Trying to just put the la little last bits here that'll that just make it a little bit more make sense. <laughs> It's tough. It's tough, guys. It's tough. Guys and gals. Yeah. Might as well put my little Signy in there for fun. Ta -da. So that's that, I guess, with this. I don't know. It's kind of okay. I mean, it's not meant to be an amazing drawing. It's just a color study, really. Um, so I guess kind of what I would, what I'll, pro I'll probably do some more practicing in here um, and try to, uh, It's it's more about like, probably being more abstract like I don't mean to like actually super like make a super colored like spawn thing on these covers you know um probably imply color and I don't know probably be limited on color to be honest like <clears throat> you know I mean even take like a, a cue from these actual comics you know it's it's black and white i mean i could even do that i should try to experiment with that like black and white with um you know red accent actually might be a really good approach you know just keep it black white red and grays actually there's grays in there as well so huh i might do that actually i might practice with that at some point, you know, um, I guess I've been going for 
close to three hours, huh? Let's see the chat. What's going on with the chat? Um, Nelly, so happy with all of you who are watching and very fortunate all these fantastic live streams because you are all artist people. This is where one place great creativity is at. Yes. I agree. It's cool. Marsh cannot make everyone happy, right? But just do your best. Do, do, do. Yep. Totally, man. Lamacan Gaming. I need help. I'm making a comic. My hero just slayed a huge beast. What should I do next? Roll a dice. <laughs> um, well, I mean, it, it's it's really like you can literally do anything, and it, it just depends on where your story's at. Like, has your... Has your hero learned the thing he was supposed to learn or accomplish the thing he was supposed to accomplish? Does he, is he still yet to come across, you know, you, you know, to, to, um, you know, fight that demon? And because really a hero's journey, when it comes down to it, is more like he may like battle a big, bad guy or whatever but like he or she may battle a big bad guy or whatever but uh what he's really battling is is something inside of himself or herself that is stopping them from accomplishing from moving to a new level where they can accomplish something so it's it's there's an inner battle going on that's actually more important than the outer physical body battle generally, you know, in, in kind of like a hero's journey. So, you know, there's a million ways, though. There's a million things you can do, you know. Um, it's really up to you. That's why you're the writer. <laughs> uh, art is supposed to stimulate more creativity and thinking, discover new techniques. Did it do CB? I had to dip out for a bit and now I'm back. And look what I see. Very nice. Thanks, dude. Do, 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 do. Looking like Spawn says Dan. Thanks, dude. Anthology. IgG almost over. I think yeah, it's it's getting there. Um, the Wildcat anthology. Let's see. Let's let's let me take a look real quick. Just since CB was here, Wildcat anthology. Oh, spelled something wrong. Let's see. Is it still going? Five days left, everybody. Um, it is backed, but let's get some more backers. Wildcat Anthology. Here, I'll throw the link in the chat. Why not? Why not? He's a friend of the show. He's a friend of the show for show. For show. Bam. There you go. Check that out, guys, if you haven't checked out CB Smallwood's Wildcat Anthology. I think I, I backed it. I'm looking forward to reading it. Looks great, Marsh. Thanks, Nathan. Read Jonathan Vogler's The Writer's Journey. Goes He goes over the hero's myth, the hero myth and three-act structure. Yes, I agree. I mean, I haven't read that yet, but I, that's something I need to read, Dan. But you're right. I've heard many good writers um, suggest that and... Um, I, I think it's pretty good advice from what I've heard. And I, I kind of know some of the concepts of it already and everything. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think that's about going to be it, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, it's been really cool chatting with everyone. And like I said, I'm going to do more of these. Um, the only thing I would ask is just, uh, you know, like and subscribe if you like 
like this stuff and you want more and uh i'll be back with more actually friday um i'm gonna be doing a, another video uh with scott circlin so uh, come back for that on friday um and that's about it guys i'm gonna go relax probably watch the rest of heat because i started watching that again last night and it was really awesome so i'm gonna finish that and uh get some sleep and go back to the uh the side hustle aka um my day job <laughs> so anyways i hope you guys have a great evening and we will talk to you next time